Hey guys, Ron here from Soul Operative Games. Going to do a little something different today. Uh, we are about to hit 300 subscribers to the channel. Sounds like a little reason to celebrate. Let's, yay, thank you for everybody that's sub to the channel and likes uh, watching my videos of our favorite games played in a solo mode. Uh, today what I wanted to talk about is I just got home from a couple day trip down to Vegas to compete in the World Series of Board Games. Um, this was a brand new event, uh, first time they've uh, run it, um, and just wanted to tell you a little about my experience, how I did, and uh, yeah, just talk about the World Series of Board Games. Um, so what it was, it was kind of a very ambitious project that they put on. Uh, they invited anyone to sign up. You didn't have to qualify or do anything other than buy the ticket, um, and you could buy any level from, from one tournament to up to four. And uh, if you bought the four, you got a free hotel and everything for doing that. Um, I was only able to compete in two days. Um, but I want to shout out to SaltCon, uh, our local convention here in Salt Lake. Uh, did give me a, um, a ticket that I guess I won uh, that helped pay for some of the costs. So uh, shout out to Dale and Mike for doing that. It was awesome. Um, but yeah, my wife and I, we traveled down to Vegas. Just made the six-hour trip down there. And uh, it was at the Bally's Hotel. Uh, which is an okay hotel. It's not the best best hotel in Vegas, but uh, we're not really interested in any of the you know, drinking and gambling and stuff down there. Today. So Vegas doesn't have a huge appeal to us, um, but it was, a, it was a fun time. So they had the tournaments going on for four different days. Each day had, you know, a bunch of different games you could play. Um, you could only sign up for one game per day, which kind of make it tough if you have two really good games that you wanted to play and on the same day you had to pick one. Um, but I picked uh, Azul and Dune Imperium. Uh, Azul I practiced, I probably played over 20 games. It's not a lot, but that's that's a lot for me on a single game. I like to spread out and play a ton of different games. Um, I just played it on uh, Board Game Arena. It was really easy to get into games and, and practice and uh, got pretty good at it. So I had a lot of confidence going down into to playing Azul down there. Uh, Dune Imperium on the other hand was a lot harder to practice because most people that are playing it online are playing it with the X expansion. You know, like on Tabletop Simulator and stuff. So it was very hard to find people to play against with just the base vanilla version of Dune Imperium. So went there with not a lot of expectations to do well in Dune. Just wanted to have a good time and, and you know, play with some new people and, and see how I did. So that was how I went into it. I uh, went down there. We, we didn't get there till Friday. There was games on, on Wednesday and Thursday. Um, and it was really cool. They had, um, you got free guest passes and they had a whole like game con basically going. Uh, where they uh, they rented the library from Dice Tower, um, so they had the whole. Oh, well, I don't know if it's a whole <laughs> game library from Dice Tower, but it was a very uh, sur uh, huge <laughs> library of games to play. Uh, so while you weren't competing in a tournament, um, you or, or your guests or anyone else uh, were just playing games at a big, huge ballroom set up for that. Um, they had a bunch of like um, guest stars come down there, just various people from YouTube and, and other uh, areas. Like Tom Vassell was there. Um, and some other people, so that was cool to see. Um, but yeah, so let's talk about the tournaments. So Azul went in there. There were uh, 64 entrants into the Azul tournament, so it was going to be a three-round tournament for you know four-player games. Uh, if you won the first, then there'd be a semi, and there'd be a final. Um, I was doing pretty good. I was I was getting my whole uh, yeah. Let's show Azul here. If you haven't played it, it's tile laying. Um, uh, just a puzzle basic, you know, basic puzzle game. This is the base, base Azul, the first version of Azul. Uh, and yeah, I was having a good game. Uh, I was getting the tiles I wanted. It was, it was pretty friendly as far as an Azul game goes. No one was really like hate drafting or trying to dump a ton of tiles into, into someone. I was a little bit worried about that because if you establish an early lead, then a lot of times you get gang it up on and people will be like, okay, let's, let's try and prevent that person from getting the tiles they need. Um, so you have to watch, especially in a tournament setting with Zool, that you don't get out to too big of a lead, uh, but you still you set yourself up to win. So I got top three rows, uh, finished, and, and then one column. Um, and I had two yellows on the four line, and the guy, I guess he was seat two, I was seat four. Um, he was in last place, you know, no chance to win, really. Uh, took the four yellow tiles that basically I needed to win <laughs> and uh, dropped him on his fifth row. So he didn't score any points from him. He basically just kind of hate drafted me on the last turn uh, to pre prevent me winning. So I was a little salty, but it was, it was I guess, a good move. Um, if he would have been in, 
you know, in the score and had a chance of winning. It would have been a great move, but he was so far behind. It was really just a, a move that hurt me and, and allowed somebody else to win. So I unfortunately went out uh, first round on Azul. The score were, uh, it was 87 to 86 to 85 to 50. Um, so I got second place there by one point. And because I had three rows filled, I would have won the tiebreaker. So one point away, basically, from winning that round. And who knows how, how it would have gone from then. Maybe I would have just crashed and burned the second round. But it was a great time. Um, I liked Azul. It's a, it's a fun game. It's just tough in a single round elimination because there can be just, you know, things that just knock you out and really uh, prevent any chance of you have a winning. So that's how Azul went. Uh, that was Friday. Um, on Saturday, we played... Let me grab that one. Played some Dune Imperium. Um, that one, again, I had really no expectation of, of doing well in. I hadn't done much practice. I think I have maybe like five or six plays of Dune <laughs> in a multiplayer setting. You guys know my channel. I'm solo operative, right? I play solo games and cooperative games. I have a ton of games that I play with friends too, but just not, uh, you know, tons and tons of plays. There were people that were like, oh yeah, I've played over 150 games of Dune. I was just like, okay, I don't stand a chance. Um, first game... I played Helena, uh, so I like her because I don't have to worry where other people are going. You know, she has the ability where she can go to blue and green spaces without uh, being blocked. So that just kind of takes that mental game away where I don't have to think about other people blocking me in those spaces. And it just really frees up my mind to concentrate other places. Um, so yeah, the first game, um, it was an interesting one. I don't remember a lot about it, but it did come on top uh, right at the end. Uh, scored the last combat victory, got the double points, and won that game, which was pretty surprising. Um, but I was pretty excited, and so we went to the semifinals game, uh, played Helena again, and this time I went straight um, entry cards and faction alliances. That's all I was trying to do. I wasn't trying to win any combats at, at all. Uh, and it just so happened that really no one else in the game was trying to go for faction alliances. I don't know why they were all going for combats and beating each other up. There was a bunch of ties in first place, so people weren't even getting points, which is just great. And uh, yeah, I'm trying to remember everything that happened, but um, by the end, oh, I was fishing in tree cards because I knew I had so much uh, got up on all the faction tracks that if I could get that end game scoring card, which gets you two points if you go up on all four tracks, the third level, I was like, I've got this in a bag, and I couldn't find it. <laughs> I think I drove, went like through like maybe 20 entry cards that game, which is more than I've ever tried in a game of Dune, in the limited plays I have, <laughs> I have of Dune. Uh, yeah, so, um, but uh, ended up taking three alliances, which is six points right there, and in a four-player game, you only need nine to win, or at least to cross the threshold to win. Um, so I got the others through. I got the uh, entry card that spends four spice f for a point, uh, I got the injury card that says pull three of your troops out of combat, score a point. Um, so really, I I was pretty confident by, you know, round eight that I was going to win that game. Uh, went into the last combat and just pushed everything in and, and took the victory there. So that was cool. Won the, the, the second game and went into the finals <laughs> of Dune. Uh, so that was the final four competitors. And at the WSBG, if you win a final, um, you, you get a ring. Um, to say they call you a ring winner, there's like ring events, uh, and that puts you in the semifinals. Um, well, we'll talk about that part later. Let's finish up with Dune. So, last game, it's this point, I think it's about 9 30 at night. So, we've been playing Dune straight for like six hours. <laughs> so, uh, my wife ran, grabbed me a hamburger just to like uh, eat as fast as I could. I think it was about nine o'clock, but it was pretty late. Uh, and, and playing another, you know, probably another two hour, two and a half hour game of Dune. I knew it was going to go pretty late into the evening and it did. Um, but WC, uh, best BG, the finals, they, um, they filmed them all. They only live streamed one of the finals each day. Uh, and that night I think they streamed Blood Rage. Um, but they did record it. Uh, and so that is going to come out on their YouTube channel sometime around the end of October, I think maybe early November, uh, they'll release all of the finals, uh, with commentary, with edits. So if you want to go see my my final match in Dune Imperium, uh, I'll try and link below once that does come out, or you can just go and subscribe to the WSBG YouTube channel and, and wait for those to come out. Um, but yeah, we were, I was playing against uh, a guy that already won a tournament that week. Uh, I think he played in Splendor. And so he already had a ring, and he was already in the semifinals. 
um, but he wanted he wanted two, <laughs> so he was playing really hard. Uh, he went out with Baron, um, and I was again Helen. I played Helen at all three games. So I figured what's broke, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Uh, and then we had a a du uh, no a, a Paul and uh, uh, yeah and a, and a Duke in there. So I yeah I think that was what it was. So you had no beast, um, and uh, yeah I got the first two cards. First two combat cards were both points. Um, and I had planned on getting a bunch of spice and then getting my third, uh, um, token. I don't remember what it called <laughs> at this point. That was, that's pretty sad because I was playing in a Dune final and I was still referring to things by, oh yeah, that thing over there. <laughs> uh, so yeah, you'll watch the video and you'll be like, this guy doesn't know Dune, why is he in the final? But I was there, right? Um, but yeah, so my agents, right? I, I was trying to get my third agent and then I saw that there was a, a point available early on and so I ended up, instead of getting uh, turning my uh, spice into money to get my agent, I went and got uh, troops instead, won the first two combats pretty easily, probably overcommitted. Um, I got two early points. I was like, hey, this is great. And uh, got an entry card, and it happened to be the one I'd fished for the previous game, which gives you points for going up the faction board. And uh, at that point, I was like, okay, well, I've already got the points I need from, from combat. If I go get, um, you know, the four points from the factions maybe one or two alliances, and then this card puts me at 11, you know, maybe gives me a chance to win. So I'm like, all I care about at this point forward is faction. And then the problem came where our card row started out with two scouts and uh, a couple other nice cards, but those went, those went pretty quick. I'd reserved one. And I think I wasn't able to build it, and so it just got trashed. Um, Reverend Mother came out and I had reserved it and didn't get enough to buy it. So I'm, I had bad plays that on that part where I had reserved cards and just couldn't get enough uh, influence to buy them. Um, but yeah, it was fun. I was doing okay. And But the problem at that point is the, the card row stalled. Like nobody bought cards from the card row after I think round three or four. And everyone, it was a game of chicken at that point, right? There were like two scouts and maybe some twos, some like spacing guild stuff that nobody ever buys. Um, and so, yeah, nobody wanted to buy something from the card row that, that would then reveal something better for the next person to buy. So, yeah, it, it literally went the last six rounds. I don't think anybody bought anything of the market, which totally negates Helena's ability like to, to take something good. I think I reserved like a, a level three spacing guild just because I had a signet ring and I'm like, I got to reserve something and try and force something to come out better. And it just never happened. So that was that was bad. And then um, uh, one of the other players uh, was also directly competing on, on factions this game. And she was, you know, in all the combats that was giving um, faction bumps and, and all the entry cards that were giving faction bumps. And so it was really impossible for me to get an alliance um, with what I had, the cards I had. I basically had diplomacy and, uh, and a spacing guild one uh, spy or I think the imperial spy for the uh, the top faction there, and then one of the spacing guild ones. So I really have only had three cards that even could get me faction, um, and yeah. So I just I tried, <laughs> and I just could not get points uh, on the on the faction tracks, and that kind of sealed my fate. Uh, it did come down to the last turn where I could, I had enough cards where I could have gotten at least the level three on three tracks, which was one point, but that wasn't gonna give me the win. Um, I also needed to win the combat. And uh, the first player of the last round um, took the Highliners. And so he put five, I think five troops plus one he had garrisoned. And so he was all in on the war and I needed those two points. So I was like, I'm not going for second place at this point. I have to go for first, which means I need to win the war and get three bumps on three different tracks. And that was just, that was way too ambitious to do. Um, I, I had my third agent at that point, but it was way too late to get it. it I don't know if it hurt or helped me, but um, I was just like, I have nothing else to do. No cards are coming out in the card row. I think I ended up with 11 cards in my hand or in my deck. Um, but it was it was still fun. We had a lot of fun. The second game I played, the semifinal, was very quiet and very tense. And the finals table, people were joking around and having fun with it. And 
we kept asking the judge silly rules and she would overrule us. Uh, so yeah, we were having fun with it, even though it was a, you know, there's a lot on the line to win a cool, cool ring and a chance to, to win a lot more, uh, the cash prize. So, um, after about, I think all of us were, were tied at five points at one point, there was a stack of all of our scoring markers. It, it, it calmed down got a little, a lot quieter and, uh, yeah, at that point it got, you know, it was, it was business at that point. So it came down to the last turn. I, uh, I'm like, let's just hail Mary it and let's try and get a faction bump and then get as many intrigue cards as I can. And maybe something will give me, you know, troops or the ability to deploy troops or something. And, uh, ended up getting quite a few troops into battle and drawing an intrigue card to let me, uh, I don't remember the name of it, but it'll let you take one of the opponent's troops out of battle and you get to deploy one in battle. And he had already revealed, so he had no way of uh, adjusting to that. Um, but I think he had quite a few swords. I think his final strength was about 24. Um, or maybe it was lower. Maybe it was around 16 and he got some intrigues. I'm trying to remember. But anyway, I played all the intrigues I had. And I was three points shy on the final victory. And um, I can't remember if he had more intrigue had I surpassed him. Um, but I didn't end up with two troops left in the garrison. But if I'd done my agent turns the other way, going up for the, uh, the faction first to get the troops, and then going to get uh, my entry card draw in the blue space, I would have had those troops in, give me four extra combat, and would have been ahead, not knowing if he had another entry card where he could have boosted ahead. But had I done had I done that and he not have cards, I would have won the combat and taken myself from seven up to nine, and he would have come, instead of getting the two, he would have been stuck at nine. So we would have had a four-way tie at nine and actually gone into another round uh, where I could have easily probably gotten my, the faction bumps that I needed to get two more points, and I think I would have had a good chance at winning. So it came down to probably playing my agents in the wrong order, but I, I didn't know that because I you know didn't know what intrigue cards were coming out. But Hindsight, if I knew the deck and what order it was in and I'd played perfectly in the order, I think I had a chance. But in that one, you're playing for first and, and you, you can't, you know, second, third, doesn't matter at that point. So I didn't really care that I got fourth. Um, but yeah, so finished fourth overall in the Dune Tournament, not expecting even to go past the first uh, first round. So I was pretty excited about that. Um, so yeah, the winner, that was his second ring. He did win uh, two ring events in Splendor and Dune. Uh, and so that was the qualifiers. Um, so talking about some of the other games, uh, they had a ton of games ranging from, you know, lighter games like Ticket to Ride and Carcassonne, Splendor, um, although in an intense tournament setting, Splendor becomes quite <laughs> tough. They, I think they played a two and a half hour game of Splendor in the final. Um, but they had some really heavy games like Brass and, um, Dude's not a heavy game, but it's more, you know, strategy. Uh, acquire so even a very 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 old game that's that's hung around and a lot of people like it um some more you know combat oriented games like uh like blood rage um a game i'd never played before called raw and so yeah if i would have made it past dude and, and ended up with raw i would have been like scrambling to learn the rules in time for the that game um but yeah there's a huge list of, of games they played there was there was 16 different games uh, all over the map as far as like, you know, board games, um, which is really cool. Um, so going into the semis, there were 14 winners. There were actually two people that won two rings. Uh, and so that left 14 winners of the 16 games. Um, one female in the entire group. That was awesome to see. Hopefully they get more uh, female competitors out in future years. That'd be awesome. Um, but yeah, so they what they did at that point they had all the winners up on uh, kind of like uh, in, this, in this room and Tom Vassell drew out uh, the names of games. So they would draw it out and be like, ticket to ride. And so that ended up, the first four that got drawn out of the, of the bag were the games that we played in the semifinals. Uh, and then whoever won that game, they just put in the next table over to make sure that you didn't play the game that you won. That'd be unfair, right? Um, so like the winner of, of Ticket to Ride played Brass, <laughs> the winner of Brass played Acquire, the winner of Acquire played Carcassonne, and then the winner of Carcassonne played 
Ticket to Ride, and then everybody else was fun uh, funneled there. So the, the final four games were Ticket to Ride, Carcassonne, Brass, and Acquire. Um, and Acquire was actually the one that was drawn for Dune Imperium, the, win the winner of Dune Imperium, which means if I had won Dune, I would have been playing Acquire, and I've never played that game. <laughs> I'd watched a video of it before, so I at least knew kind of about the game, but I, yeah, I would have been scrambling to learn the rules and, and probably not won. So I didn't get a ring and, and I probably wouldn't have gone to the finals anyway. Oh, well. Um, but yeah, so um, they went to play in the finals. And so if you watch those when they do finally make the videos up, you know, give the people the benefit of the doubt that that's probably not the game they went to compete in or one of the games they would have picked to compete in. Some of them, like when the game was announced, like, yes. <laughs> and other guys are like, Oh, I don't know. I don't know that game. I'm going to scramble, you know, because I think the games were announced at about midnight on Saturday night and the finals were Sunday at 9 a.m. So you had to pull an all nighter and play and practice that game uh, as much as you could. I think they said one of the guys that uh, got into Ticket to Ride played not eight games of Ticket to Ride between midnight and 9 a.m. <laughs> and uh, just to practice and get, and get good at it. So, that's cool. Um, but yeah, so they got uh, the four finalists and then that was Sunday at about, uh, about two 30. I think they delayed it a little bit. Um, maybe it was one 30. I switched time zones at that point cause I was driving home. Um, but they announced the final game was Dune Imperium. <laughs> um, so the, the winners of those four games went and played Dune and, uh, yeah. So they had a, a final winner. Um, which was live streamed on their channel. So if you want to go check out that final game of Dune, again, give them the benefit of that as you're watching that maybe Dune was not their most preferred game to play. <laughs> and, and and so they could have gone in. And, and that was what one interesting thing about this tournament is there's 16 games. And if you wanted to really have a chance at winning, you needed to be good at all 16, just in case, you know, one got drawn. Uh, and and so hopefully the, you know, the final winner was was deserving, you know, of, of that title of, of knowing, of being an all around board gamer, not just specifically good at one or two games. Um, and that, that's a cool, it's a, it's a new kind of um, format that I haven't really seen before. A lot of tournaments are just for a specific game. Um, but this was completely open to anyone on an enter. So, you know, even me that's not great at a certain game can enter it and almost win it. <laughs> you know? So, so that, that was cool. I really like that. Um, to it. And so let's talk about um, takeaways. Um, it was their first time hosting and it showed. Uh, there were a lot of kind of, you know, things that maybe they were too ambitious about and weren't able to quite pull off. Um, their social media presence, unfortunately, wasn't the greatest. A lot of people wanted to watch more of the games as they were going. Um, they had the tournament room in, in a separate room, so nobody could really observe or, or cheer on. You know, there was no, you know, environment like that. Um, but hopefully once the videos come out, then we can all, all watch and, and see them, but it would have been nice to have more live stuff. And even though while you weren't competing and you were in the other room playing board games, it was brought up, it'd be nice to like have a stream, you know, um, up in that room just so people could watch and cheer for their, their friends. Um, so that's a bit, a, a thing maybe they can implement next year. Um, the Bally's Hotel not the greatest. <laughs> um, it was it was a decent rate as far as the, the nightly uh, expense. They had a discount for us, but um, they're much better hotels. And so I assume they picked that one because it was cheap. Um, their first year, didn't know how much money they were going to raise from the entrance. And so they wanted to make sure they uh, picked a hotel that they could afford based, you know, even if a lot of people didn't sign up, um, which was interesting. There's another thing. I think... Um, Based on estimates, there are maybe about 250 competitors, which was a lot shyer than I think they intended. Um, seeing that on their website, they said, you know, max 256 entries for a single game. Like Azul said, max 256 and only end up having 64. Um, so, yeah, I think they didn't quite advertise enough uh, or maybe it was too expensive. So people um, didn't go out. I mean, you got to pay to travel to, to Vegas, and then also pay to to enter into the different tournaments. Um, but a lot of people did. A lot of people traveled. There were people from Asia. There were people from Europe, uh, Florida. Let's see, met some Californians, some people from Arizona, Colorado, other people from Utah. So a lot of people did travel from, you know, far away. Some were close, but um, 
they did get a pretty international crowd there. Uh, the library was awesome. It was cool that they could get uh, Dice Tower to, um, I, I guess they rented their library. I'm not sure what the, the details of that, uh, but they had their library there and that was really cool to have just a whole, you know, game con going on during the tournament. Um, my wife and I played a ton of games um, while we were not, while I wasn't competing. Um, yeah, but hopefully, hopefully next year they, they kind of work out the kinks, you know, and I, I'm sure it was a learning experience. They took a lot of feedback from players, uh, from people as, you know, the, the lead organizers kind of walking around and talking to people and getting feedback. So I think it'll be even better next year. Um, talk about next year. They have already announced the games for next year. Um, they are adding Arc Nova, one of my favorite games. They're adding Castles of Burgundy, one of my favorite games. Uh, they are adding um, Cascadia, which is, you know, much lighter game. That's gonna be an interesting one. And they're adding Patchwork. Didn't expect to see that one on there. Um, Patchwork is two player game. So if that randomly got drawn for the final, I guess they'd have to do a mini tournament of, you know, two v twos and then the winners compete and have a third place game or something like that. Um, but yeah, so even opening it to, uh, a light of a light as of game of pa as Patrick a patchwork, <laughs> um, and the games are removing. I think they got rid of Catan. Yeah, I hate Catan, um, and they got rid of uh, um, Dominant Species Marine, and I'm not sure the other two that were uh, there that got cut. But um, yeah, it's gonna be exciting. I I hope to attend next year. I'm not sure. Uh, but will based on the timing and expenses and all that kind of stuff. But look forward to competing if I can, and uh, going back and, and rechallenging for the championship of, of the Dune Imperium uh, tournament. So, thanks guys for watching. Hope you uh, enjoyed that recap of the World Series of board games. Uh, we'll continue to make uh, more, uh, more videos on this channel of of so some solo content, and some cooperative content. Uh, got some cool things coming up as soon as we get shipped a copy of the. Um, South Tigris series uh, by Shem Phillips. So we'll start getting those in. And to kind of celebrate that one being released, I'm gonna go back and play, there they are, uh, <laughs> um, Paladins, Architects, and Vikants uh, on my channel and get some solo uh, plays of those in. Uh, we still need to complete our Merchant's Cove series. And um, that one right there, welcome to the moon. <laughs> uh, but there's a ton of things like Maracaibo has a solo um, experience. Um, I just got the expansion for Dune, uh, so we can try the solo mode of, of Ix. Um, I've got Lost Ruins of Arnak right up there. That has a cool solo campaign. Uh, Underwater Cities, you can barely see it right up there. Uh, some, some good stuff for solo. Roots got some good solo if you wanna see some fighting games. Uh, but yeah, let me know. This is probably the first time you're seeing my library behind me. Uh, if you see anything that interests you, let me know and we'll get it on the channel. Uh, thanks guys for watching and uh, thanks for subscribing to my channel and, and viewing. Hit the like button, subscribe, all that jazz. Help my channel grow. That would be greatly appreciated. And uh, we'll see you the next time we meet at the table. Thanks guys. Bye.